You're tuned into More Living with Jim Brogan, broadcast live from the Brogan Financial Studios at News Talk 98.7, where old-fashioned values, expert knowledge, and genuine understanding come together to give you the retirement straight talk you deserve. Jim's a former National Advisor of the Year recipient and a financial educator, and he's here today to talk about how you can live out the best years of your life. Jim and the Brogan Financial Team have been helping retirees and pre-retirees across the Southeast for over 20 years in their pursuit of financial independence. You can reach them during the week at 865-862-6800. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn, because more living with Jim Brogan starts now. Happy Saturday, East Tennessee, and welcome to More Living with Jim Brogan, where it's all about living the best years of your life your way. This is News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Six in ten American adults have a chronic disease, such as heart disease, diabetes, cancer, or other serious illness. And chronic illnesses account for 75% of the $2.2 trillion we spend on health care each year in the United States. Our personal health is a concern, especially as we age. And when I think about more living and really living the best years of your life, I, I think investing in yourself and investing in your health is probably the single most important thing we can do. Uh, we want to we wanna age, we want to age gracefully and we don't want our physical ability and our mental ability to deteriorate um, slowly over our entire retirement. We want to, you know, really stay vibrant and strong right up until the very end. What are some ways we can work to reverse chronic disease? And can we really make changes that will be impactful in the long term? And how hard is it? And what are some myths about illness and about diet, and about nutrition, and about fitness. Our guest today is a friend of mine, Dr. Barrett Dubert. Dr. Barrett is a, is a doctor of chiropractic care, and he's worked in the health industry for over 35 years. He is the owner of the Health Factory in South Knoxville and Armor Health out in West Knoxville. Uh, he places a tremendous focus on helping clients reverse chronic disease and pain with an emphasis on functional nutrition. Good morning, Dr. Barrett. Great to have you with us today. Uh, Good morning, Jim. It's great to be on the show. Yes, it's always great to visit with you. You're so knowledgeable. Let's, uh, Let's first talk about your journey, Dr. Barrett. What inspired you to a career where you help individuals with their health journey? And give us a little bit of your background because it is very interesting. Sure, it is because I had one of those chronic diseases. Um, we we call it asthma, and so asthma um, was something that affected me as a child. And you know, it was a situation where I was told multiple times that I'd have to be on uh, rescue inhalers and breathing treatments, um, and s- seemingly with no end and and really no hope. Um, well, so I just started to look into it a little bit more in senior year of high school. I ended up going to a chiropractic physician who uh, not only um, started to adjust my spine um, to improve nerve function to my lungs, but was advising me in nutrition and uh, how asthma is an immune issue and what I can do to improve my immune system. Well, after about six months, uh, I slowly started coming off my inhalers to the point today where I am completely off all my medication for the last, I mean, gosh, since I was in high school. And, uh, and it's absolutely changed my life. And so at that moment, I had a passion for uh, speaking that same message of hope. Uh, it's hard to have hope in, in the idea that we're destined for disease, and it's just something we're going to have to live with, uh, versus we can take actionable steps to reverse chronic disease uh, in our family and then in our children and our children's children. So those are, those are the things that propel me today and, and the mission that we have is to educate people that health is something that you uh, either will uh, uh, create or disease is something that you'll either fall into if you are passive. And so that's my story and that's my background and, and it's really what shapes the practice uh, uh, that we have today in, in Knoxville. 
Well, and I've got as I've gotten to know you over the years, Dr. Barrett, you know, you're so passionate and authentic with what you do and you also live the walk, you, you you live the talk and and you know, that's important too. So it's not just the passion to helping others, but you live it every day. You're such a picture of health yourself and that's a great uh, example to those that you work with. The United States, Dr. Barrett, has the you could argue it's the worst healthcare experience among the 11 highest income countries. Uh, even though it spends the highest proportion, we in the United States spend the highest proportion of gross domestic product on health care, according to research by the Commonwealth Fund, yes, we're, yet we're the most unhealthy. Why are U.S. citizens, in your view, so unhealthy as a, as a collection? Yeah, you nailed it. Um, we, we are not doing well in our sick care system. It's not even health care. Um, yet we're number one when it really comes down to emergency care. And I think the biggest um, issue uh, in our society today as, as, an, as an American is, uh, is we're very much a cons- consumer-based industry. And we want things fast, and we want to always be on the go, and we uh, usually ignore the warning signs in our body. It's more of a mindset that we have. We just are on to the next thing and on to the next thing. Um, we're constantly consuming. We don't ever really take a step back and, and heal and rest and recover. And then, uh, and then when we're in a crisis mode, we're immediately just going to grab whatever's on the shelf, uh, whatever prescription the doctor prescribes, and we're going to take that just to kind of move on to the next thing. And, uh, and so we just live in this fast food industry, and the problem is we're addicted to it. Uh, so when we consume a little bit of it, uh, then we want more of it, and it's really hard to break addictions like sugar addictions, and it's really hard to get started in a new habit of fitness and nutrition journeys and a wellness journey um, because it's even something that generation over generation uh, we haven't been teaching and we haven't been educating um, the next generation. And uh, the faster pace our society becomes, the quicker we're just trying to get resolution uh, or mitigation of some symptom to the point where we're on to the next thing. So it's, it's, a little, it's a little bit of a mindset. And then it's just, a, 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 you know, inevitably, uh, we're not being educated uh, on what health really is and how to get healthy. You know, that's, that's really interesting, Dr. Barrett, when you talk about the pace of the U.S. lifestyle and how that contributes to our overall health. And, um, You know, we think about things like nutrition and fitness, but you're right. The pace is maybe the driver and and then stress, too. I I know that we'll want to get to stress a little bit, too, that the pace kind of creates. One of the things that you mentioned, Dr. Barrett, in there were we kind of ignore symptoms uh, and just keep Mm -hmm. on going a lot of times. And we need to be very in tune to our bodies. What are some common symptoms that can point to some deeper, deeper issues that we may overlook? That's right. That's a great question because what we would what we would consider as normal are what I would consider as common but abnormal. And what we see as common, a lot of times we just take that as normal. So we look at our our peers and we say, "Well, they have that and I have that. Therefore, it just must be normal." For instance, brain fog, low energy levels. Um and low energy could be lo- even low sex drive. We have a uh, just a, a feeling of uh, achiness and, and joint pain, digestive issues, um, high blood pressure, hypertension, and so we we kind of get in these smaller symptoms and as simple as headaches, and we just assume that they're common, and then we usually will take a medication for that common symptom, uh, but you know every medication does have a side effect, so uh, when we ignore that one, it usually brings on two, and then we're on maybe two medications, um, and then we're just trying to get into a, 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 a groove, and, and, but we, we find that ourselves are defaulting to the usage of chronic medication and, uh, and again, a stress lifestyle. So I think those little warning signs are something that we just consider as so common, almost to the point that they're normal, but the important thing is, hey, if your gut is – is not healthy that's that's a problem it's not just a common symptom 
Do things start in our gut, Dr. Barrett? Is that where chronic illness really starts? I really do think that if we were to boil down chronic disease as a whole, going back to our early childhood, our digestive system, which is considered our second brain, is the most important area of influence in our health history. It, for instance, if a mother takes a probiotic um, during pregnancy, she reduces the risk of type 1 autoimmune, which is a chronic disease, type 1 autoimmune diabetes in the child just by taking a gut-friendly bacteria during pregnancy. Yeah, that's, a, that's amazing. So if we look at the ability to stop chronic disease and autoimmunity and reverse the trend of these disease processes, we absolutely have to look at the gut as primary, even from an early childhood. And I would tell you even today, if we don't know where to start, a lot of times the gut is the first place to start. We're visiting with Dr. Barrett Dubert. He is the, uh, he's a chiropractor. He's the owner of the Health Factory in South Knoxville off Alcala Highway. He's also the, uh, the owner of Armor Health out in West Knoxville off Lovell Road. When we come back, we're really going to unpack a lot of this. We're going to talk about a little bit more about chronic disease overall. We're going to talk about prescription medicine. We're going to talk about movement, stress, weight, all of those things so that you can take better control of your health. Stay tuned. This is More Living with Jim Brogan, only on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Welcome back to News Talk 98.7's Brogan Financial Studios, where Jim Brogan is coming to you live with important news and advice to help you achieve your dream retirement. Get ready to learn and live. Here's your host, Jim Brogan. Welcome back to More Living here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I'm your host, Jim Brogan. We're with you every Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. and again from 3 to 4 p.m. You can also catch all of our shows. We podcast them on my website, broganfinancial.com. Click on radio. You can hear all the shows as well as my dollars and cents segments. I think about the most important topic that we talk about on this show uh, is our health and wellness. And it's so critical that we age gracefully and vibrantly and we can really thrive in what should be the best years of our lives which are those golden years uh, when we have all those years of wisdom we're visiting this morning with dr barrett dubert he's become a good friend of ours mine and Dee's over the years he's also the owner of the health factory and armor health he's a chiropractor and really more about whole body fitness and whole body health Let's dive a little bit more into overall chronic disease dr barrett according to the cdc Chronic diseases are defined as conditions that last one year or more and may require ongoing medical attention or limit activities of daily living or both. So what are the most common or some of the most common chronic diseases? Yeah, when we get into chronic disease, I think uh, the main ones that jump out to us are uh, heart disease. So anything in that realm of hypertension, Um, heart disease. We have cancer as a chronic disease. Um, And then we start getting into even digestive disorders like irritable bowel syndromes and, um, you know, GERD, acid reflux. That can be a chronic disease. Asthma and autoimmune conditions um, are chronic diseases. And uh, and the the most important thing with all of these uh, is that they are preventable diseases. And that's, I think, the most important thing When we hear chronic disease, sometimes we think, well, it's just part of my genetics. But what we know today is you may have a genetic predisposition, but your environment plays the biggest role in how those genes express themselves. Therefore, we have the ability to reverse the trend of chronic disease in our family. And one chronic disease there... um Dr. Barrett, um, that I would also bring up, of course, diabetes, blood sugar. How, how much does diabetes and blood sugar, and we know adult type 2 diabetes is largely lifestyle related. First off, do you agree with that? Is type 2 diabetes largely lifestyle related? Oh, 100%. Yes, sir. And then how much does that lead to some of these other things? I mean, when you talk about heart disease, hypertension, even, even arthritis, chronic pain, autoimmune disease, how much does... does yeah. um, does diabetes and blood sugar cause those things? 
It's it's the biggest. It really comes down to the the largest factor and environmental influence on our genes. Yesterday on our uh, podcast, th- we we're talking about chronic disease, and one of the things that we mentioned was heart disease. Um, that actually high cholesterol in and of itself, there is no current single paper research paper that exists that shows that high cholesterol by itself is a risk factor for for heart disease. Yet, blood sugar dysregulation is at the core of why heart disease exists. When we have high blood sugar, it is very similar to creating inflammation within the arterial walls that then cholesterol has to be produced to create a plaquing uh, protection to those arterial walls. So high blood sugar, not only is it linked to heart disease, but we know even cancer cells feed at a higher rate. Their metabolism is at a higher rate of, for sugar than anything else. We know that Alzheimer's and dementia is referred to as diabetes of the brain. We know that when we eat sugar excessively, it creates higher inflammation within our joints and we create higher inflammation within our gut. So blood sugar dysregulation is probably the single most important uh, focus for us in our office in helping people get it regulated, get it balanced. And what we know from longevity research, so how long a person's going to live, is pretty much how stable their blood sugar levels are, which means it's not driving high and then dropping low. Okay, it's not like the stock market that goes up and down. (laughs) It is very stable. (laughs) And as we create stability, then we create longevity. Let's uh, on on chronic disease, Dr. Barrett, um, you mentioned prescription medicine. We kind of take a pill and we move on. And years ago, uh, I have a good friend that, that called, he called prescription drugs for chronic disease for the pharmaceuticals. He said it's an annuity in a bottle, meaning mm-hmm. once you start taking them, the, they know it's it's almost like an annuity of income for those pharmaceutical companies for the rest of your life. Now, what's the difference between the mission you are on to find root causes and root them out versus modern medicine's approach to treatment of me- of symptoms and can you realistically get off some of these prescription drugs? Oh, man, that's a good question. And, it, and it's a jam-packed question because yeah. it's true. The best, the best medication is one that you have to stay on for the rest of your life, and it doesn't kill you. And so that's going to produce the best dividends in the end, and that's why statin drugs uh, produce over $30 billion annually. It doesn't kill you. But you are going to be on it for the rest of your life. And so can we get someone off statins? Absolutely. Can we get people off uh, typical chronic disease medications, pain medications, and, and, and digestive medications like Nexium and Prolix? Absolutely we can. And so it's very possible. And the, the, the goal um, be, behind the different model, and it's not an, a, a medi- medical doctor model. It's a, it's a model of health, um, and so we call it an allopathic model. The allopathic model is a symptom treatment model, whereas when we talk about a vitalistic and holistic model, which medical doctors practice in and chiropractors and nurse practitioners and PAs, that, that holistic, vitalistic model, it looks at the whole body and not just the body physically, but also the body spiritually the body mentally, because we know that stress is one of the biggest predictors of disease. If we have high stress levels, we're going to have heart disease. That is, we can have stress attacks, not heart attacks. And so I do think that when we look at the human body from a holistic, vitalistic model, we have to take in account how well they're managing stress, what their relationships look like, in their surrounding environment, how fast-paced are their society uh, that they're living in, um, what's their nutrition look like, are they moving their body, how well are they sleeping, recovering. And when we take these areas into account, then we get a better picture of how to heal versus just treating a singular symptom in an allopathic model. Well, and the stress thing, that goes back to the pace that we live, uh, which you talked about in the first segment. 
I want to ask you a little bit about stress, uh, a little bit more there, Dr. Barrett. Um, I've noticed as I age, my ability to handle stress has decreased. Uh, it seems like anyway. And so I've had to work harder at reducing stress in my day-to-day -day life as I age. Is that, is that a symptom of maybe that, that there's other health concerns going on? Is that a normal thing as we age, our ability to handle stress? And how does that affect it our is. overall health? Yeah, G great question. We call this uh, stress resilience. How well is your body able to take on the stress load of the world? Because there's one thing that we can't do. We can't change our external environment. Uh, we can change our internal environment, what we bring in our body. But a lot of times our external environment is it, it's a toxic world we live in. Um, but we can change in how, what we do uh, internally, and then we can also change how our body handles our external environment. We call that stress resilience building. And we do, uh, over time, have, an, have a, a decrease capability of handling stress, but that's, that's something that can be improved even as we age. So I, I would actually say that we could handle stress better as we age if we put into practice things that can make us become more stress resilient. One of the best things we talk about at our office and on our podcast is um, things like breath work. When we are able to, uh, to decompress and breathe and do some intentional breath work like box breathing where we breathe in for four seconds and hold our breath for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds and hold our breath for four seconds. We call it a box breathing. It's a Navy SEAL technique. It helps build stress resilience. When we do uh, cold showers, <laughs> it's exposing our body to a stressful environment. But when we do it and we're breathing slowly through it, it actually helps build stress resilience. When we strength train, it builds stress resilience. And so I, I, would, I would say that we could actually be more stress resilient as we age if we start practicing stress resilient techniques. That's extremely interesting. Um, your podcast, by the way, Real Health with Dr. B, um, is that, where can people find that podcast since you've mentioned that? Yeah, that's on all the major platforms. So Apple, iTunes, it's on Spotify. Um, and so, yeah, all the major ones. It uh, can be can be found, and th yeah, exactly right. Those are the techniques, and it's really, again, like you said, it is really interesting. The science of stress resilience is very very interesting. When we when we expose ourselves to a stressor in a in a in a mindset of health, that stressor can actually build a resiliency within us, and th and that's even all the Swedish studies on sauna usage and infrared sauna and heat sauna is really going off of that platform of stress resilience building. We're visiting this morning with Dr. Barrett Dubert. He is a chiropractor. He's been in the health industry for over 13 years. He has his own podcast, Real Health with Dr. B, um, and we're talking about whole health. And when we come back, I want to get into the things that you and I can be doing as we listen to Dr. Barrett to create a more healthy lifestyle and maybe some things that, that maybe somewhat overlooked in the equation of important health. We're also going to have our dollars and cents segment. Don't let a flat tire derail your retirement. Stay tuned. This is More Living with Jim Brogan right here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Welcome back to News Talk 98.7's Brogan Financial Studios, where Jim Brogan is coming to you live with important news and advice to help you achieve your dream retirement. Get ready to learn and live. Here's your host, Jim Brogan. Thanks for tuning in this Saturday. I'm more living with Jim Brogan. Right here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI, where it's all about living the best years of your life your way. And in order to live those best years our way, we have to have our health. So we're talking about chronic illness and chronic disease and how to create healthier lifestyles. We're visiting with Dr. Barrett Dubert. He is the owner of the Health Factory off Alcoa Highway and Armor Health out in West Knoxville. Uh, we're going to visit more with Dr. Barrett about how to improve our health with little things that even maybe some overlooked things you may not be thinking of. 
However, before we get back to Dr. Barrett, it is, it is time for dollars and cents. Want to be sure you are getting the most out of your retirement? For all the years of your retirement? That's the primary goal of More Living with Jim Brogan and our Dollars and Cents segment, where we provide you with an important financial tip that will help positively impact the quality of your life in retirement. And now, here's Jim with this week's Dollars and Cents tip. When you're cruising down the open road and everything's going real smoothly, you're probably not even thinking about getting a flat tire. But the reality is it can happen at any time, and you know how things go. It always happens at the worst time. It'll be on the way to the airport or an important business meeting or an important meeting with a good friend. And if you've got your toolkit ready, then in the worst case scenario, you'll just arrive a little late. But what if you get a flat tire and discover you have no tools or no spare and you haven't prepared for it? The difference between these two scenarios comes down to one word, preparation. If we think about the last two, two and a half years, our economy and our stock market has given us two unexpected flat tires. We had the pandemic, global pandemic of 2020, which we're still dealing with, especially uh, on the economic side with shutdowns in China. Uh, but we're still dealing with the after effects of that, and we're get, trying to figure out how to unwind all the, all the federal stimulus that we've received. Completely unexpected. And then this year, we've seen a flat tire in a very unexpected uh, movement of our markets. I mean, the stock market and the bond market have been substantially down both together at the same time, which is very, very unusual, highly unusual. So those are flat tires, and the reality is, as I mentioned on my retirement minute, dollar uh, markets are unpredictable and they're volatile. There are going to be moments where the markets throw us for a loop, and we can't really plan for that in, in terms of knowing it's going to come. We don't know the timing of markets and economies. Uh, we can prepare for it, and that's where your financial plan comes in. Also, don't think right now is a bad time to plan for that because, you know, if I go back to the beginning of last year, 2021, the market is still in the green as compared to January of 2021. So it's not the, it's not the end of the world. You can still make a plan and prepare for the reality of volatility. Now, with the challenges of inflation, in the long term, the stock market has historically been the number one way to beat inflation. The problem is markets in, in the short term are highly volatile and unpredictable. So in a good financial plan, especially for retirement, we don't depend on the stock market for our short term needs, things like income in retirement. If you're a younger person, your emergency fund or the monies that you're going to use to buy a car or, or put down on a house in the next two or three years really should not be invested in the stock market because it's so unpredictable and you don't want it to be sharply down at the very moment in time you need to cash in that investment and buy a car or put down on a house or retire and you need income to supplement other sorts of income like Social Security and other income uh, you may have. So preparing for these things before they happen is so crucial, and you can do that now because in the context of history, we're still in a good spot for you to take control of your financial future. How do you create an income plan that, that mitigates the effect of short-term market volatility? How can you have an income plan that can beat inflation over the long haul? How can you reduce income taxes so that you have more money in your pocket? How do you make sure to take care of yourself as you age medically and also make sure you're, you leave the type of legacy you want to leave behind for your family? So a comprehensive retirement plan is crucial to short and long-term success. That's our Dollars and Cents segment for this week. You can find this week's Dollars and Cents segment and others by visiting broganfinancial.com. 
Do check us out at BroganFinancial.com. You can click on radio and hear all our podcasts of our radio show and our dollars and cents segments. Also, I have uh, Pellissippi State is offering a new class through their adult education that I'm teaching. It is income planning for retirement. It's a one-night class. You know, most of my classes I've done through the years through adult education and at UT and Pellissippi have been two night classes, two two hours of sessions. And I am still having those this fall. But on August 30th, I'm having a one night class just on income planning, how to structure income, how to have stable income that doesn't depend on the stock market in the near term. Don't let the market drive your ability of when and how you retire. How do you grow income in the long term? How do you reduce income taxes to put more money in your pocket? How do you decide on Social Security election strategies? We get into all those things and more. To find out more about that class and the other classes I teach throughout the fall at the University of Tennessee and Pellissippi State, you can go to BroganFinancial.com and click on Classes. And registration for that one-night class on August the 30th is already open. And that's in West Knoxville off Hardin Valley, right there in the heart of West Knoxville. Uh, I expect that class is going to fill up. So it's, it's never too early to register and secure your spot. Today we're visiting with Dr. Barrett Dubert. Uh, he is a chiropractor. He's someone that Dee Dee and I have become friends with over the years, have been treated by him, and have become friends. And uh, he owns the Health Factory in South Knoxville and also Armor Health out in West Knoxville. He also has his own podcast, Real Health with Dr. B. Dr. Barrett, let's get into uh, how people can become more healthy. Let's just kind of go through, like, where can we start? Let's go through a few things here. Uh, the first thing that I guess jumps to mind is nutrition. Talk to us about nutrition and what is good nutrition and is it different for you versus me versus someone else? Yeah, I would say it, it can be. In the beginning, no. Um, I don't think nutrition has to be individualized. Um, I do think, though, as we hit our targets, that we are going to have to continue to refine our nutrition um, based upon our health goals. But in the beginning, uh, food is food, and food will heal or food will cause disease. And we know that the foods that heal are those that are from plants and from uh, lean meats and nuts and seeds. So it can be a very simple nutrition plan. Most of the, the bigger names behind uh, nutrition um, that you may hear about are like primal nutrition or paleo uh, diet, you know, that's pretty much just telling us we need to eat lean meats, um, you know, fish uh, a couple days a week, uh, chicken a couple days a week, some lean grass-fed uh, beef a couple days a week. We need to uh, consume plants, a diversity of fruits and vegetables, and then nuts and seeds to provide us with those fats that our brain needs and our hormones need um, to produce. And so, I would say nutrition is very simple. Uh, we do want to complicate it, but in general, the most important thing in most of us is sometimes not even just what we eat, but even how we eat. And so not only do we talk about we want to consume a nice, clean plate, but we also want to consume three solid meals a day with no snacking so that we create stability within our blood glucose levels. You know, every time we snack, it spikes our blood glucose levels and then it drops back down. So three solid meals that are balanced with fiber, that are that have a quality protein, quality fats and quality carbs will stabilize those blood sugar levels throughout the day. So let's go let's go back to that Dr. Simple. Barrett, the the snack thing. Cuz cuz so many people say we ought to be eating something every 2 or 3 hours. So this would kind of go against that, right? It would. You know, unfortunately, um, when we talk about eating consistently, what we're doing is constantly spiking insulin. And if we know anything about aging, um, we know that the more that insulin is spiked, the, the, the faster we age. So if we want to create uh, high metabolism and, 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 and gain muscle, and, and we're in our younger years, and we can do some you know, strength training. We have huge health goals and fitness goals. 
yeah, we probably want to consume five meals a day, um, three big meals and maybe two snack meals. But as we age, our, our metabolism shifts. And so what we need to do is cater to how our bodies progress. And from a longevity perspective and an anti-aging perspective, three meals with no snacking is actually what research indicates as being more beneficial to our aging versus small meals, five meals throughout the day. What about intermittent fasting? Like should we, what, what about only eating two meals a day and, and doing it within an eight hour time frame and then not eating for 16 hours? You know, or, or is that an extreme version of intermittent fasting? How does that work, and is that important to the body? I would tell you that that's probably um, been the last 10 years of how I've taken my nutrition is done it within windows of feeding versus windows of fasting. So, yes, I, I, I'm a big fan of intermittent fasting or what we call time-restricted feeding windows. And so, but with that, the most important the most important thing, and this is where people get into trouble, is when we when we go from three meals a day to two meals a day in eight hours, a lot of times we'll just remove a meal, and then now we're in what we call a caloric deprivation state. We're actually we, we're eating too little, and sooner or later our body will adapt to not eating enough, which will cause weight gain to occur. It's, it's ca- so counterintuitive, Jim, but – Actually, you, you have to eat to have a high metabolism to burn fat. And so that's where people can get in trouble. But I do like the concept of, of intermittent fasting and eating within a window. You know, when you're talking about that, Dr. Baird, it starts to make my head spin a little bit because there's so many different things out there and we hear and that we read different programs. How, who do we listen to? I mean, it, there's so many things out there. There really are. Uh, it, it, it can be so difficult, and that's why I think in this information age, it, it is so confusing. And I'm sure you hear about it in the financial world. Hey, wh- you know, what do I do? When do I do it? And so when you but, – but let's be honest. Probably finance, finances are as simpler than most people think, and, and nutrition is as well. If we just do what we've been doing for thousands of years, we're going to get healthy. And that is eat quality foods. Just that's it. Lean meat, nuts, seeds, vegetables, and fruits. And I promise you, you will be healthier if you do that. And, uh, and, and the more that we get information online, the more confusing it becomes when yeah. we don't even have our foundation set. That's very well said. We're visiting with Dr. Barrett Dubert. He is... Uh, He is a chiropractic physician with an emphasis in functional nutrition. When we come back, I want to get into a few other ways we can get healthy and talk about. We certainly want to hit on movement. We're not going to have a lot of time, but I want to talk about sleep and hydration and, of course, the alignment of our spine. So stay with us. This is More Living with Jim Brogan on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Welcome back to News Talk 98.7's Brogan Financial Studios, where Jim Brogan is coming to you live with important news and advice to help you achieve your dream retirement. Get ready to learn and live. Here's your host, Jim Brogan. This is More Living with Jim Brogan here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. We're here every Saturday at 9 a.m. and again at 3 p.m. You can also check us out online at broganfinancial.com. We're visiting with Dr. Barrett Dubert. He is a chiropractic physician He with an emphasis in functional nutrition, and we're talking about health. Dr. Barrett, let's go through a few of these other things. We'll have to kind of hit these in rapid fire, but let's talk about the importance of sleep. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty critical. It's where we recover. It's where we heal. And, uh, and it's also where a lot of our healing is disrupted because we have poor sleep habits. So typical recommendation is really simple. Wake, go to sleep and wake up at the same time. Try to get eight hours of sleep a night. And if we're under eight hours, then just take a 15-minute power nap to help the body heal and revitalize and recover. And so sleep is huge at allowing our bodies to heal and handle stress, but also it allows our brain to heal at night as we're clearing out a lot of toxins and inflammation through our lymphatic system. 
let's talk about water, the importance of water and how much. Is it eight glasses? Is it more than eight glasses? I'm here, sitting here, Dr. Barrett, and I hate to tell you this, I'm having my second cup of coffee today, which reverses the effect of water. So talk about <laughs> water. Water. Yeah. yeah, we call that negative water. You know, water is something that's really profound. I had an MS patient, multiple sclerosis, who was really overwhelmed with her nutrition changes. So we just put that on the shelf. And I said, hey, I want you just to drink half your body weight in ounces of water a day. She had about a 30% reduction in overall symptoms within 30 days by hitting that water milestone. Wow. If you do nothing else but you leave the show today with one thing, drink, drink half your body weight in ounces of water every day. And if you do that, I guarantee the body will be healthier. So that's my typical recommendation. If you weigh 200 pounds, you want to consume 100 ounces of water every day. So, Dr. Barrett, if, if I'm drinking half my body weight in ounces and then I have these two cups of coffee, do I need to drink half my body weight plus an additional two cups of water or just kind of keep it simple, stick to the, to the to half my body weight? Yeah, you nailed it. If we keep things simple and don't think of it too 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 complicated, <laughs> then we're on the right track, right? <laughs> well, I will say so if I'm yeah, if I'm drinking, I, I've had periods of time. I always drink more than eight ounces, eight glasses. But um, you know, I've I've yo-yoed a little bit as as to getting in half my body weight. But when I do that, it naturally you going to drink less coffee and less caffeine. Yeah, that's true too. That's true too. Now on movement. What's the key to movement? It, you know, we, we know cumulative exercise works. We know from cardiovascular studies. So, you know, that we got all the Fitbits, counting all of our steps. What would be your quick 30 seconds or 45 seconds on movement? 10,000 steps a day. I mean, if we have a starting, if we need a starting point, hit 10,000 steps a day. Hmm. I know it sounds silly and we're like, hey, I mean, does Fitbit, is that even really, it? does my steps really mean anything? Actually, research is really good on hitting a certain amount of steps per day. And when we hit 10,000 steps a day, then we can raise the bar to 15, maybe even 20. But that breaks our sedentary lifestyle. And then, as anything, if we start small and stack habits, it creates consistency. Then we can start having a conversation about aerobic fitness and Tabata training and interval hit training and weight training. Dr. Barrett, unfortunately, I only have 20 or 30 seconds for this question, and you're going to wish you had more time. I want to ask you about your why real quickly. Uh, you and I are both believers. We believe in a risen Christ and put hope in that. Um, you've, you've decided in your business to really incorporate that as a major theme in how you, uh, in your mission, really, in your business. Uh, talk a little bit about that decision to merge that why with your business in a very um, tasteful but overreaching way. Overarching. Well, you know Overreaching is not the right word. Overarching. Yeah. So we're never going to be satisfied with our bank account, portfolio, or in our body. No matter how many times we look in the mirror and if we're 8% body fat, 200 pounds, and lean mass and ripped up, it's never enough. And so we can't get enough from the world. And so our mission is to help people understand that they are wonderf wonderfully and fearfully made, created in God's image, and they are loved. And out of that state, they can increase their portfolio and increase their overall health for the purpose of living the quality of life that God's called us to. In that state, we can, we can truly be satisfied with. Thank you, Dr. Barrett. Check him out, Real Health with Dr. B. That's his podcast. Thank you for tuning in this week. This is More Living here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Brogan and his guests are not that of Cumulus Media. Any discussion of financial, legal, and tax planning strategies is not intended to be individualized advice and is general in nature. Always consult with your advisor for advice specific to your needs. This program's content does not represent a recommendation of any particular security, strategy, or investment by Jim Brogan or Brogan Financial Incorporated.